when I was approached with the project, I decided to read the book, which I'd never read before, but I knew a lot about it. It made me think a lot of the other woman who raised me, my other mother. I was a child in that time, so it was astonishing for me, a sort of now more modern Afrikaans woman, to try and access, to try and go back to uh, my, my mother's time. And I also now understand why our country is still so full of pain, to be quite honest. I'd heard a lot about the struggle from the children or the students' perspective, but never before from, from a mother's perspective. We have youth today who were born long after the era of Bukmangen, who were born long after the era of uh, work permits. They do not know the history of South Africa. We find people today throwing over electricity that is switched off and then they will shut off streets with rocks and whatever. But they do not understand where South Africa as a people is coming from. The real issues that people had to deal with. Die wet sê, as een man nie vir 10 jaar vir die selfde baas werk nie, moet sy vrou gaan. Maar ek het nergens om te gaan nie. With Poppy you have a woman who's lived in Cape Town for most of her life, who's suddenly told she's not allowed to live there anymore. And I think that kind of courage and conviction um, that Poppy faces is, I think, something that speaks to not only a South African audience, but a global audience. And the current global migration crisis that we have. I think it's almost with our country's history showing the rest of the world careful. If we could have Poppy Nongena's story as a history in schools, it would help us as a country to understand where we are coming from and how we can get to the destination we're supposed to get to. And I think because I was raised by two very strong women, I think in a way this became a kind of love letter to the mothers of South Africa. Oh,